Hi Ginger Career Chat, it's Callie here, it's Saturday um, and the topic this week is educating others. Um, do you find yourself being the token gender queer person in a group and having to explain pe- gender to people on a regular basis? And how do you handle it and does it ever get tiring? Um, so to dive right in I would say I'm often the only gender group person in a group of people, very often, most of the time, but I I don't know if I would say I was the token gender group person because that implies that, you know, that, that there's some kind of um, expectation that there would be a gender group person around me, and actually a lot of people I know probably don't know about the term gender queer and um and if they do it's it's because I have explained it to them. I don't make it a mission to educate everybody who I know. I tend to deal with these things as and when they come up. I probably I in fact I definitely don't do it often enough. I definitely need to be better at um at, at educating people, at you know, kind of talking to people. It's just I don't like to derail a whole conversation by if someone refers to me and says, "Oh well, you're a man, so you think this," or "I'd like a man's opinion on this." Um, to which my answer is usually, "Well, you should go and find one." Then. Um, but uh, you know, but I don't like to derail a whole conversation by talking about that stuff like that, and people. Are not like people don't tend to. Maybe it's just people I associate with, or maybe it's a cultural thing, a British thing. But people don't tend to like call me out on stuff like that. Um. Like, casually, kind of disavowing the idea that I'm a man. Um. People tend to just let the conversation go on. Maybe think it would be awkward to talk about it, but I often don't find it very easy to just kind of slip it in there. Um, and even when it's just me and one other person people tend not to bring it up and maybe I should talk about it more but as I say I'm reluctant to derail an entire conversation just to talk about about my gender identification but when people directly ask me about it I do I will explain or try and explain Um, whether or not I use the word genderqueer because it can raise a whole kind of issue about um, kind of terminology and stuff and but it's I am not very good at talking about it because even like people I know who are kind of down with differing gender identities and who um, and who are themselves queer, I don't always like spend a lot of time talking about my gender identification. And maybe I should a bit more. There was one occasion last semester when I gave a talk to the Feminist Society at my university, of which I'm a member. Um, and I gave a talk, and my ta- the title of my talk was Effeminacy and Feminism, and how what Julia Serrano in her book Whipping Girl, calls ephemimania, um, this kind of societal obsession with um, male femininity in a way that it's not obsessed with female masculinity. I mean, society does have problems dealing with female masculinity, but that's a whole other issue. Um, um, the, the, the kind of peculiar kind of... Uh, fascination and horror that society has for male femininity that Julia Serrano calls a femininity and what she talks about in her book Whipping Girl um, she um, uh, so I gave this talk and the text for the talk was like 10 pages from Whipping Girl and it was like a discussion so I opened the discussion by giving a kind of pre c of Serrano on this issue from the whole book referring to the thing I had talked about, um, 
And I also actually also to another essay of hers, which is on um, the Gay Utopia, which is a really cool website, which you can find at the the gayutopia.blogspot.com, an essay of hers called Performance Piece, um, which is about the perform performativity of gender, the whole idea of performativity of gender, and how it's often misconstrued. And that essay has been reprinted in. Um, or printed, I don't know if it's for the first time or what, but that essay has been printed in um, the excellent new book, Gender Outlaws Next Generation, edited by S. Bear Bergman and Kate Bornstein, which is which I just got um, this week, and it is superb. Um, so if you like S. Bear Bergman, if you like Kate Bornstein, if you like books about gender and gender queerness and gender fuckery, then I strongly advise you to read it. Anyway, sorry, tangent, because this was the, the, the talk I gave, which was about Julia Serrano, Whipping Girl, performance piece, um, what, for want of a better word, we will call male femininity, or feminine gender expression in male-bodied people. Um, and But the talk, but the discussion, which fo- was to follow my short talk, was pretty much about... I mean, there was a lot, like, people were, like, asking me questions about my personal gender identity and what I thought the answers to these questions were. So that was really interesting, but that doesn't really happen to me very much. And I wouldn't want to be, like, constantly educating people on these things. Because I I would say that it, it gets tiring, and I don't do it enough for it to tire me, but just kind of being visibly queer is often tiring because you know especially in the middle of my time where I live there is a a high school um, and there are often teenagers from this high school who um, will make uh, comments about my appearance um, which obviously shows you doing something right but it can be a little wearing if you have to, because I, I, I have to walk past this high school most days, and I don't want to like time it so that I don't walk past there at lunchtime or break time, so that the so the the kids aren't there because then, what would that achieve? But I would just be kind of giving in. But um, I do sometimes change my route, and that's tiring having to kind of position myself so I won't be around people who will call me names. Um, And so the explaining is like a whole other step from that. And I just don't, I don't like arguing with people. Um, Be nice, why can't we all just get along, eh? Okay, so I don't know how much sense that made because I did that in quite a torrent stream of consciousness. But I was working at the bookshop where I work this morning and as I was doing my mindless drone labour of shelving books and dusting shelves, I was sort of contemplating this topic. Um, So I hope that made some sort of intelligible sense. And um, yeah, I had a nice time in Germany uh, last week, um, which is conforms to every stereotype I had about Germany, which is that it's very efficient and very clean. Um, And yeah, I loved it. German people speak fantastic English, which is great because I don't speak any German. Um, And I felt a little bit guilty being the kind of cultural imperialist, colonialist, walking around speaking my um, dominant language. I did give the German a go, but uh, I think... um, if they pretended to understand me, they were just being kind. So, um, in sum, see you next week.